Thank you so much, my loves, for joining me today on this episode. I have a very special guest with me. Her name is Cora Morgan, and she is one of my current clients. And I thought it would be a good opportunity for you all, my lovely listeners, to hear from some of the clients that I work with and some of the realizations and breakthroughs that they have gone through um, in their love journey. So Cora, thank you so much for joining me today. Why don't you just kind of introduce yourself and tell people where you're from, what you do all of that jazz. Hi everybody, I'm Cora. I am originally from Louisiana, but I live in Dallas, Texas. Um, I am by day a business process analyst and my side hustles include things that are crafty from greeting cards to birthday cards. I mean, it's just all over the place. And you also have a plant business, correct? Oh yeah. Let's talk about that too. <laughs> so the plant business came about this year during COVID. Um, one of my neighbors and I are both truly Southern girls whose grandmothers and great grandmothers were plant people. And we kind of just uh, shared our love for that and it turned into an awesome opportunity. So New Growth Plants is my plant business and it's been good so far. I love that. So. One of the things that I think is like really interesting and what happens for a lot of the people that I talk to is that they become super, super busy. And obviously you have a lot on your plate and perhaps <laughs> that was purposely done or not. Can you talk to me about the decision-making process of like having all of those things happening by day and by night for you? Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm at my best when I'm busy. Um, it is definitely a distraction from everything else in life for me. So when I started New Growth, I was also doing a certification program at Cornell University and I still had LMB and my full-time job, but I don't know, like I just, it's my norm. When I'm not busy, I actually feel like I'm slacking. Mm. So, um, it's been interesting to, to not be busy and be in a relationship on purpose. It feels good. Right, right. <laughs> and one of the things that's also really interesting is that oftentimes we make ourselves really busy, as you said, to distract ourselves or to avoid yeah. the things that we have to actually acknowledge <laughs> and go through. Do you feel yeah. like part of what you were doing was also that as it pertains to your love life? Um, It definitely kept me from feeling like I didn't have anything going on on Friday nights. You know, like I didn't need a date night because I just filled orders on date night or, you know, um, I, it probably was intentional, like subconsciously for sure. Um, but now I definitely feel differently about all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right, girl. We're, we're definitely going to talk about that. Um, so talk to me about your love life kind of beforehand and before getting into the Get Your Guy program and working with me. How often were you dating? Um, and talk to me a little bit about like some of your past relationships. Um, so before coming to the program, I was dating not as often. Honestly, this year has just been interesting in general with like COVID. Mm -hmm. So I did a couple of virtual dates from time to time, but I mainly stuck with guys that I had dated that I already knew like the disappointments to expect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just like how they rolled. And that was like better than starting with a new person for me at the moment. So um, that was my norm was kind of just dealing with ridiculousness honestly <laughs> what kind of ridiculousness like talk to me about what these men were doing and how they were showing up or not that's it not, not. <laughs> uh, major inconsistencies um in consideration of my feelings mm. um like not being a priority like oh my god I can't believe like I was dealing with all of that for so long yeah. <laughs> so opposite of my life right now yeah. but um yeah just I feel like if you tell me for instance we're going out on Friday and then I don't hear from you until Sunday that's a problem you right. know and that was kind of like a normal thing with like several guys that I was dealing with, which made it necessary to date so many because no one was bringing what I needed. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. And why do you think that you were dealing with that BS? Um, 
honestly, it was, I don't know if it, if it, it was that I was comfortable with accepting that for now, just mm-hmm. because it felt like being having something better, you know, as, as opposed to like nothing at all. Right. Um, uh, but I wasn't happy with it. It was just what it was. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, talk to me also about your familial relationships, right? Because one of the things that I know, especially with working with a lot of really together Black women, is that uh, they also have some family-ish going on as well. So talk to me about how you related to your family as someone who has found some success in life. <laughs> Oh my gosh so I am the oldest child for both of my parents and my step parents mm-hmm. on my mom's side I'm the only girl which means uh I am like the second parent so right. um I feel like I just said the other day I feel like I've been an adult for most of my life mm-hmm. so I've mm-hmm. been heavily responsible because I grew up in a single parent household um, my dad was there of course like I love my dad but I lived with my mom. So right. um, I became like, or and I'm, I'm working on this, but I'm kind of like the person that they come to when anything goes wrong, whether it be financially, hugely sometimes um, it's financial stuff. And it, it's not like tons, but it's still like, I still have to be that lifeline. Yeah. Um, and when there's dramatics, of course, I'm <laughs> looking um, so it's, it's always been that way though. I don't, it's been different to learn to not accept that for sure. Yeah. Which is some of the work that we've been doing. Oh my gosh. I think that's called like boundaries, right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. All of that. <laughs> uh, definitely. Right. Um, good. So, and I'm saying that because you are not the only person that goes through this when you have your life pretty together and if especially if you're coming from a black family oftentimes you will have people in your family that maybe are having a harder time and will always kind of want you need you claw at you for things that they are not able to provide in their own lives and so I know that that was the case for me and so many of my clients out there and so I'm so glad that, that you were able to kind of speak on that because it's something that is so important and also how we learn to relate to other people right? Like this, this notion of, um, okay, so people, I do these things for people and that means love. And that is not how we operate, especially in a romantic relationship. And if we're coming at it from that perspective, then it's like, there there can be some drama or dramatics, as you like to say, in terms of how you're (laughs) treated because of what you're producing in the relationship. Um, Okay. So, when did you know that you needed some help with your love life, girl? Hey, <laughs> yesteryear. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I am a kind of like blatantly honest person in general, right? Um, I've filter- learned that. <laughs> <laughs> filter is usually pretty thin. Um, and when it comes to myself, like I felt like, like I knew some of the work that I needed to do. However, big comma, I'm not the best person at keeping myself accountable. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of work better with a partner when it comes on, when it comes to like uh, self-help type stuff, or even with like exercising, anything that's not dealing with money or work, then I kind of need like a little bit of help. So I decided, um, actually one of my sorority sisters, um, she's she's a big sister to me and that she's older than me, but she treats me like I'm her little sister biologically, seriously. So she was just listening to some of your um, lives and had some friends that were familiar. And she was like, I think you should check him out. I might check him out. And so I just started listening to your lives and I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is all so relevant to me. Like I need this. and. I think I just decided that since I'm working from home this year, I'm going to invest in myself Mm -hmm. and I'm going to take the opportunity to take advantage of the time with being at home and being kind of in a quiet space and do the work. So that's kind of just what it was. 
Okay, so you were listening to the lives and the <laughs> webinars and all of that. Were, yeah. was there anything in the listening that like resonated with you specifically that you were like, oh, okay, this is like, this is someone that I think I can work with? I think it was just, you have like this personality that makes me so comfortable. Like I felt like I knew you. Like I felt like you were talking to me directly. Yes, it's girl. Kind of it was kind of weird. Like, I didn't know how it would be. Like, I was like thinking, okay, is this just a persona for lives? Or, you know, like, is it going to be different when I actually talk to him? Like, am I going to, you know, feel as comfortable with listening to you? Like, I started sharing them with people like, girl, check this out, listen to this, da 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 And we were all like, but is he like that in real life? And mm. then after we did the the intro call and you were like that, I was like, I'm doing this. Oh my God. Like, this is my fairy godfather. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh my God. I cannot believe that you are calling me your fairy godfather. I don't know whether to be slightly offended or like laugh my head off girl, because you're killing me with that. <laughs> it feels like though, it's like this this person who comes in and like sprinkles you with like this love and dust that makes you a better person. And it's like, I was telling my friends, I'm like, it's not like he's telling me what to do. He asked Never me that. make me figure out what to do. It's kind of like you tap in like that, that extra notion that I'm like ignoring. And you're like, no, no, no. What are you thinking? What are you saying? And I need that. So that works for me. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to the actual intro call or the consultation. I mean, were you nervous? Were you just like, whatever? <laughs> so, and, and then talk to me a little bit about what happened on the consultation call for you um, that really helped you make the decision beyond me just being me. <laughs> okay, there's that part. But, um, so yes, I was very, um, and why were you nervous, girl? Because I don't like telling people my business. Yeah. Like, and I, I feel like, also, I'm the person that people come to. I don't go to anyone for anything when it comes to like emotional type relationship type any type of ugh, any of that. Like the right. ugh, um, I'm not a sharer. Um, I'm usually the person that everyone comes to. So I was nervous about opening it up and being mm -hmm. honest. Um, but it was something in the questions that you asked that made me feel like more safe. And when we were talking and I, I, I don't know, I just felt myself like relaxing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and I felt myself being more comfortable um, because I didn't feel judged. Mm -hmm. um, and that's huge for me. Um, I just felt like, I think I told you, I was like, you feel like a family member. Like I'm yes. talking to someone that actually cares about my well being, which is also new for me. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I felt like during that call, I think I felt like a little bit of emotions being triggered. That's something you know that I'm still working on because I'm not yeah. big on crying. Um, but I felt like some of that on the inside and I just, I don't know. It was just the call that yeah. helped me with the decision for sure. Well, girl, I'm so glad that you got on the call <laughs> and it's true. It's like, I always tell people on these calls, I'm going to talk to you like you're my sister. So there might be, there might be things that I say that don't feel right to you or feel uncomfortable but I'm doing it with love and respect and all of that so I'm glad that you felt comfortable in the consultation me too <laughs> yeah yeah definitely um okay so let's talk about like our work together so we've been working together for roughly three months or so what talk to me about your experience kind of just working with me we we're on calls on a weekly basis for an hour but sometimes those go to an hour and a half depending on yeah. what we're talking about or yeah. however long so talk to me just about your experience working with me on a weekly basis so a big part of the start of our calls for me was the highlight low light um part of the call which was something that was so hard for me in the beginning and now it's something that I kind of look forward to. Yeah. Um, like it's parts of, let me see, how can I say this? Parts of the week that are good 
used to be hard for me to discuss. Like yeah. I, my negative stuff outweighed my good stuff. And now it's the exact opposite for me. I'm like, well, let me think about what, what was bad. I think that's from our work for sure. Um, and then just having the expectation that there's going to be a point in the week to where someone's going to care. Um, mm. That feels like, how did, how did I get this far without having this like available emotional place to go to? Mm. Like, I don't know. I, got, I remember how it was. I can't imagine not doing this. Like, I don't, I know I would not be where I am if I didn't have like this once a week, I know this is gonna happen. And then let me not leave out the in between the, the call time. If something goes <laughs> down, post in the text message, like, oh my God. And it's that you can tell when I need to talk. It's just, I don't know. It's so special. It's so good. I don't know. I don't have words to explain like how valuable it is to have like a person for this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I love 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 um being able to um go on this journey with you and all of my clients because it is a journey, you know. And to your point, you don't know what you don't know or what you've been through or what you needed to go through to get to where you want to be. And so, um I feel truly honored to be able to be with you on this journey, right? And I'm so glad that you mentioned that like there is somebody that cares. And one of the one of the things that I I I really want to um you know instill in my clients is that like when I'm working with you, this is a partnership, right? Mm -hmm. This is like a yeah, I'm gonna give a damn about you, but you also have to give a damn about the process and yourself and everything about it. I want to make sure that when you do get into that relationship in the future, which you will, that it doesn't become like this thing where you have to go from zero to a hundred. You are already in the habit of expressing your emotions, expressing your highs and your lows in a way that feels supernatural and seamless, right? Mm -hmm. That you can rely on somebody and you're in the practice of doing that because that's what's really going to create the connection. So I'm so glad that you mentioned that. Um, to, to your point about the highs and lows. I mean, we talk about love, but we also talk about a variety of other things, right? I, yes. <laughs> Oftentimes we're talking about work too, right? Yes, yes. And that's been hugely impactful. Um, it's, I don't know. I, I remember I, one of my friends, I was talking about you and she was like, no, you don't have a relationship coach. You have a life coach. He was like, get your life coach, girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It is like, get your life together mm. um, because it, it's just not love. And it's relationships I'm learning are more than just intimate relationships. Like there's relationships all around and just learning how to set boundaries for me and all of my relationships has just been life-changing for me. I, I have to stop. My kids are going crazy. Hold on. Okay. She needs to go down. All right, girl. That was my two. That was my two-year-old. She had to go to the bathroom, <laughs> and she has to let everybody know about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know it's crazy. Ugh. Anyway, okay, let's get back on track. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, I think it's important that we talk about all aspects of your life because your relationships are everywhere, and. Um, I also think because of the women that I work with, work is such a big, important part of their life. And it has been almost like a boyfriend surrogate in a lot of different ways. And so it's a really great opportunity for me uh, to work with you and other people in terms of how do I communicate my displeasure with something at work? Right. And I can how can I leverage that into some of my romantic relationships as well so that I'm I'm heard, I'm seen, I'm understood, all of that. Right. How do I ask for more? How do I right? Yeah. How, how do I how do I how do I communicate in a way that I can be heard that I want to be seen more that um, and also represent myself and not just represent my work. 
right? So um, I think that's an important part and work is something that I talk to all of my clients about. And I want to congratulate you on um, this new opportunity that has come about for you. Can you talk a little bit more about that? So I really was comfortable at my job because I got to fly like kind of under the radar. Um, but something happened this year with, I don't know, maybe being in a new position at my old job. Maybe it was COVID, working from home, working with new people. But I started to feel like I wasn't bringing to the table everything that I could. Mm -hmm. And when I expressed that and my opportunities didn't meet what I needed them to do, I just started to gently tip my toe out there and look around a little bit. And I found a new job, like, quickly. Honestly, I was of surprised it happened. Um, and so the new job is a new company, but I'll be doing the same thing just with more responsibility and more exposure. I'm so excited because- And more money, girl. Oh, girl, let's amazing. not forget that. What, 20, 30% more or something like that? I got an increase of about roughly $25,000, $30,000. So yeah, I'm super excited about that part. I mean, yeah, I- Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like everything is just like blossoming all yeah. at- Yeah. Time. And I, I've had some of my friends to tell me, I think it has a lot to do with you doing some work like on yourself. Yeah. And um, triggering things to happen, you know, because you're putting effort into it. So I'm excited. Yeah. And this is something that happens with a lot of my clients, right? It's like, once you do the work, I like to think of our work as not just like doing the internal work, but also doing like this expansion work, right? Where we are expanding our limits and what we're comfortable with and understanding that we can trust ourselves more even on in things and journeys that are unchartered, right? And so I'm just like so happy and proud that you have been able to do things that feel super uncomfortable. That, that And also trust yourself and know that it's going to be okay, right? That you've got your back, but also that there are people out there that also have your back if you need to be supported. Right, which is yes. also, I think, a very big part of it. Me too, for sure. That has mattered a whole bunch, and that's new. And I'm I'm thankful for that, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the changes that you've seen within yourself while working together, um, and if anyone else has kind of noticed those changes. <laughs> oh my God, I think I've become the boundary queen. Okay. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> you about to take my crown, girl? I thought I was the boundary queen, but look at you. Okay. Yes, girl. Oh my you, God. you can have it, girl. <laughs> I um some of the major changes in me have definitely been around boundaries, which. It's interesting because I felt like I had them. Mm. Like I felt like they were already there. Like I felt like people knew what to ask me for and what not to ask me for. But some kind of way, I wasn't communicating the limits on things that I needed mm. to, whether it be my availability or um, your intrusion. Um, I was not speaking up about that. And that's in work and personal. So mm -hmm. um, resetting and kind of finding my voice with, so in general, I've always been worried. I don't want to be considered like an angry black woman, right? I, I just, oh my God, I think that what we have as black women that is passion, that is um, sometimes like ambition, that is drive, that is something that makes us come across as very strong is sometimes viewed as like negative aggression. Yeah. And I try to like dial that back in general because I didn't want my family to feel like I was being a bee. And I definitely didn't want to come across as that person at work, but me dialing that back so much so that I was hiding my wants and my boundaries was hurting me. It wasn't yeah. hurting anybody else. So that's been one of the major, major things for me is boundaries. Another thing that has, well, setting boundaries. Another thing has uh, changed for me is uh, speaking about my expectations in my relationships. 
Um, mm -hmm. I think that this has been a big one. It's, it's been really, really good because I get to say what I want or what I expect. And then I learn what the other person wants and expects too. So it helps to, you know, know, okay, can I do this or can I not do that? Um, this is too much. This is not enough. So that's yeah. been huge for me. I think that was what were you years. doing? What were you doing before that? Just riding with whatever, just mm. going through, um, and expecting them to know what yeah. was enough. Um, and sometimes I would speak it, but I wasn't in relationships to where it was necessarily accepted. Yeah. Or, even, you know, like there's listening and there's hearing. They weren't listening. They heard what I said, right. but they weren't processing it as significant enough to like take it through your mind, you know, figure out what I mean by this, ask me questions, like, let's no, no, no. It's like, okay, I hear you, whatever. Yeah. That's me now. Yeah. And I, I also want to just, you know, hit on this point about the angry black woman there. First of all, we should be angry a little bit based on some things that are happening, but also mm -hmm. the way that we are communicating and not speaking our voice ensures that the resentment builds up to the point where we actually explode. And yes. a lot of people are seeing that explosion and then judging you for that, right? And one, yes. of the, one of the things that I think that we were working on is making sure that we don't get to that explosion point, but that we are communicating in a way where our tank is always maybe at a fourth. <laughs> yes. Instead, and not necessarily on E, because I don't think that's ever going to be the case. Okay. There's always things to be angry about as a Black woman in the world. Yes. But to make sure that it doesn't get too, you know, full where people, you know, actually take on the full wrath of, of what you have oh, to say that, and do. Wrath is the word, honey. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so that is, that is, I think I even talked to you about that at work yeah. because I am one of maybe four um, Black people in my whole department of maybe 60 or 70 people, yeah. um, which Interesting because this is America, right? And the world is very diverse, but not always in the workplace. Yeah. Um, so I feel like when there's not people there who can relate to you, it's easier to try to meet them where they are. And like, I curb myself, like I curb yeah. my personality in order to not come across as too much or too aggressive and sometimes even too smart. Um, because that's something that you don't want to seem like a know-it-all. You don't want to seem like you have to be in charge. So yes. Oh my gosh. It's been a lot of work on that for sure. Yeah. And I see you just got a text message. Was it from your man? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's how it is. Because <laughs> okay. he literally has been texting you. <laughs> errand for me. So I Isn't know. that lovely? Oh. Men to have a man to have do errands for you. Let's talk about your man, girl. Um, let's talk about him. So, what's his name, and how did this all come about? How did you get your guy? I am so like gushy right now. Oh my, oh my god. gosh, girl, be gushy, girl, be gushy. This is ridiculous. I need to get it together. Okay, no, you don't let it all out. <laughs> So my guy's name is Clint. Well, his name is Clinton, but of course we call him Clint for short. Um, we actually met on Bumble in 2019 mm. and we went on like seven dates. Oh my God. And he would not like hug me for real. He was giving me like church hugs. <laughs> he like the, not, side, the side hugs. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, and I was just like, what is this? Like, why are we going on these dates? Like, why are you... It was not enough for me. It was right. it was good dates. Don't get me wrong. Like it was very good, thoughtful dates. And I really liked that it was always like thought out and planned, or at least that's how it seemed. <laughs> I don't know. That's how it seemed. But he never tried to kiss me. I remember saying, like, he didn't even try to touch my booty, which is big for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> give me like a church hug and hug and not even like try to slide in a little nothing. It was like his boundaries were on a million, okay? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I did not like that. So I actually kind of like tapped out mm -hmm. um, because I didn't feel like it was going anywhere and it didn't feel like enough. But we did uh, stay in contact as friends and 
we still would like check in from time to time. And um, then, so that was like in like November, 2019, we were just like, oh, yeah, whatever, bye, like, bye. Like, mm-hmm. have you ever gotten off the phone and you know, like, mm, not talking that's to it. him? That's it, yeah. <laughs> like, that's done. Yeah. Like, that's how oh, And then like 20, 2020 came around and things were like, okay, I'm just checking in. How are you? It's mm-hmm. funny how COVID does that. You and so many other people, you got people coming for, out from the woodworks trying to see, oh, are you, are you okay? Are you okay? Hey, do you need anything? Yeah. Do you have toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> that was a big win. Um, so he started asking if he could come by, and I was just like, no, like, I mean, I guess, but for what? We already know, like, you're not trying to do what I'm trying to do. And we started having like these conversations about like where he was then versus where he was and where he wanted to be, as far as like a guy that was dating and a guy that wanted to be in a relationship. And so we started going out and hanging out more and more and more. And And we started working together when you started hanging out a little bit more with him. Yes. So it was around, it started happening like in the summer that we were going out. And I remember on our very first call, I was telling you about um, going out with him, but I was like, I think it's a waste of my time, blah, 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 whatever. I was not, I wasn't really, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I felt like there was a possibility because when we dated last year, I felt like he was my person for a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I liked the fact, so I liked it, but I didn't love it. I liked that he was respectful and wasn't trying to like kiss me and go out with me, like, and, you know, take me home to get, you know, get physical like that. But it was like the flip side of that. That's like, well, why not? You know? Right. Exactly. (laughs) So that was that the fact that he was that way made me feel feel like he respected me yeah but i wasn't sure that i wanted to be all the way respected all the time <laughs> i know that's right girl <laughs> <laughs> yeah so when we started working together when i started working with you um you started giving me like these tools to kind of help me to figure out like what he was to ask him like questions to know where he was and what he wanted and we started talking about like what exclusivity looked like and you know holding off on getting physical or intimate until we were exclusive and i think that the fact that i was still dating right right? let's talk about that because you told him and let me know if i'm completely off here you told him i'm working with a dating coach and my dating coach is telling me that i need to start actually dating yeah yes and it's like what (laughs) <laughs> this dating coach is no he don't want you to win like he's trying to no you don't need all these other guys like he was so uncomfortable of course he was going out with other guys and I remember like when we were dating I was telling him like yeah I'm going out with this guy I'm doing this I'm doing that and I didn't know that it bothered him like he never told me I, what we're on dating apps like you think the first person you meet like this is gonna be it no I didn't yeah. think so um, once we started, I was working with you and I was like working on my profiles and picking pictures, <laughs> picking pictures and rewriting bios and oh my God, filling in all these questions. Um, it was soon after that he was just like, um, we're going exclusive. Like I would like us to be exclusive. I don't need y'all to delete them data and the top of your phone. Like, <laughs> right, right. Um, And I think it's important. I wanted to talk about that because I think a lot of women feel like if I'm dating a lot of people, they're going to think less of me. And the one thing that I want to offer to my listeners out there is that doing what I call Olympic dating is finding a gold medalist, silver medalist, and bronze medalist actually flips a switch for a lot of men. And if they're really into you, they're going to want to compete and they're going to want to have you. And it's actually going to do the opposite, meaning like it's going to want to actually become exclusive with you that much more. And so that's why it's important for you to date until you are not single anymore. (laughs) That word, Olympic, or that phrase, Olympic dating, I almost took him out, okay? (laughs) He cannot stand it. I was like, no, baby, it's Olympic dating. I was like, we got to find some medalists this weekend. (laughs) 
hated that. Like, oh my God. So yes, I, I do think it was impactful because he was just like, well, I'm really just wait, waiting on, like, I know that I want it. He knew he wanted this, but he was just casually taking his time because he felt like there was no one else. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. We got some people out here that's competing, okay? Right. So I think letting him know that, hey, there's other guys that are interested in me and I'm interested in getting to know them until I get to my person, it kind of made him make some moves for sure. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Good. Awesome. So talk to me. I mean, we've just come on this holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Talk to me about how your holidays have been with him. Oh my gosh. I hate being single during the holidays. Let me start yeah. with that. Like it is my favorite time of year. I am like so thrilled that we got to go to like Christmas events and see lights and this season um, has been different because I actually met family members and he met family members and I haven't been in this space in some years, like yeah. more than five, maybe 10 mm-hmm. since I took someone home with me or even since I let someone meet my mom. So, um, and he, he handled it like he was so cool with it. <laughs> like My mom was just like, oh, okay. Um, and I was nervous, like, oh, God, his house is going to go. Mama, please don't say anything crazy. Like, oh, my God, <laughs> say nothing crazy to my mama. But it felt, like, very natural and organic. I think a big contributor to, to that is the fact that COVID is here. So we had been FaceTiming with each other, like, in, like, if I'm FaceTiming my mom and he's here, he'll pop in to say hi. Or if he's FaceTiming his mom, I pop in and say hi. So that kind of took the edge off of that, but it's still all very new for both of us. So yeah. it's been good. It's felt like lovely, you know, just uh-huh. all. Um, and I don't know how it's, yeah, it was a good, it's been a good holiday season for yeah. sure. So he was, he came home for the holidays, met all the family. And mm-hmm. you recently met his mother face to face as well. Uh, yes. So let let me even go a step further. He met my dad. I yeah. know him, my daddy probably since undergrad. Wow. Maybe since boyfriend. <laughs> because uh-huh. so he met my daddy, and it was like so. I sound like a little kid, daddy. He met my father. <laughs> <laughs> And it went like so cool. It was like they knew each other already. Like there was no time before that. I did not remind my dad that I was bringing him because I didn't want to like cause any additional anxiety for myself. Um, And it went really, really well. Um, And yes, I met his mom, which is like the the queen for him. You know, like that's the top get to the queen you're and also a huge milestone in a relationship journey right and like it's a it's a, it's a big deal because moms either really love me or they could do without or, me you off with their head yes exactly <laughs> but i think she i think she approves um i did really good thanks to you got her a nice little thoughtful gift um that was right on like she was showing everyone she was so excited for her goodie bag and she was calling it um and we kind of like he asked me to stay an extra day to spend time with her and him and we went like grocery shopping together we kind of just did like random things but it was just the three of us and it went really good so she got like more of my personality and she came her shell because at first she was really quiet Mm by the end of the trip she was like girl give me a hug you know like i'll see you later so it was really yeah I think that's that's an added value of working with a dating and relationship coach, being able to understand what the important parts of uh, this journey are and how to really show up for those moments, right? Um, and I feel like you like you really did. Um, now I want to keep it real because I always do, right? Every relationship is not perfect. No. Um, and what I truly feel is like once my clients, and you've probably seen this as well, once you actually get in a relationship, which most of, most of my clients do, roughly 90% of them, um, that's when the real work starts. <laughs> that's, when you, that's when we have to really dig our heels in and talk about what's really going on inside, girl. Together. How has that manifested for you? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You know that I, 
<laughs> you know that I like freak out really easily when things are uncomfortable. Um, not to him, but on the inside, and that yeah. comes to you. Um, on the outside to him, I think I'm together, right? And he can't tell that I'm falling apart if I don't say anything. He has no idea. I seem like I just have my stuff together and he thinks of me as this like to-do lady, mm-hmm. right? Meanwhile, on the inside, I'm like, ah, like just all over the place. <laughs> like Tasmanian devil, like, oh my God, emotionally, what is happening? Um, something that has been a challenge for me is learning how to be an effective and intentional communicator and to find my voice in uncomfortable situations because I am a shut down person and we don't have to talk about this ever again in fact it never happened and that is not healthy right because it did happen and I'm still upset about it but I am learning to take a deep breath We'll sigh it out. And if I need to step away, like we, we practice the code word, uh-huh. we practice the code word discipline to where if it gets to a point to where either one of us are just like, Hey, this is it for me. I, I don't, I can't go past this point. And we have a code word. Um, <laughs> sometimes he forgets the code word, even though he said it, he said the code word to honey bun, which I thought was silly <laughs> in the beginning, but, um, it helps us to kind of like reset, yes. right? Like, cause nothing is so important to where I'm ready to walk away. Right. Like, and that is not what I want. And I also don't want him to ever feel like this is something that I'll easily throw away over a disagreement. Like, no, right. I'm in it. And so that's why it's so important to me to be intentional with the words that I use. Yeah. And I just want to congratulate you because I think that has been a huge, 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 huge milestone for you Ooh. on your journey and being able to not just at work, but in your romantic relationships, not shut down, but be present for the actual conversation that needs to be had. And Mm -hmm. as we've discussed so many times, like he can't help you unless he knows what's really going on with you, right? He can't help the situation. He can't, you know, want to do what he naturally is built to do, which is make sure that you're feeling amazing if he doesn't know, right? So I just, I think that has been one of the biggest changes in you as well, to be able to like, you know, come out of the little girl shell that we did when we were growing up, but to Mm -hmm. actually have these difficult, tougher conversations and be there in your full power. I just think it's so amazing. So congratulations for that. That's something, thank you, first of all. Thank you very much. (laughs) You said something though with that, when you said like the little girl has, I have learned that he and I communicate so differently because we grew up in different households. And even though both of us grew it grew up in Southern households, cause he's from Texas and I'm from Louisiana, the differences in our, the way that our mothers behave are mm-hmm. huge certain things. My mom is a pack it away, less, like she changes the subject, mi- effortlessly like it can be oh all up here high energy argument and just show, so what are we doing for dinner like it's so quickly that the change happens that it catches you off guard and he is from the family that I don't know exactly how much they, they yell more than than we do I'm not used to that so us finding like a common ground to where you know, I don't shut down and he doesn't get so loud with me that it makes me like shut down even more has been something that we are recently <laughs> working on. But um, I think the fact that both of us show up to do the work yeah. is a testament to the fact that we both want it. So yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this amazing detail about your love journey. I'm just so happy and honored to be with you during this time. Now, um, let me know if there is something specific that you would like to tell all of the listeners out there about, you know, working with me or if they're on the fence and they don't know whether to do it or not, like what sort of advice would you give them or what would you want to tell them? If you are on the fence, jump, sis. No. <laughs> <laughs> jump, sis. Jump, girl. If you are seriously ready, this, this is a big part of this because yes. I'm with my friends. You have to be ready 
to mm -hmm. get dirty. You got to be ready to be real with yourself. Like I have huge imperfections. I mean, come on now, I'm great on the outside. Like, yes, and I come to <laughs> I sit together really nice. I show up, but on the inside, there's so much work that I knew within myself that I needed to do. If you are ready to do the work, then you need to do it because life is short. And I remember you telling me, girl, it's going to be another quarantine. You don't want to be quarantined by yourself. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Second wave, girl, second wave. <laughs> so, and, and, and it's like, just listen in to some of the podcasts, join some of the lives, take advantage of that, that, that first call. Like there's no charge for that call, but it didn't feel like, like a free, like little foo-foo call. No, it felt like a real call. Like yes. it wasn't, it was the start of our coaching, like the, the sessions for me. So take advantage of that. Try it out. See how you feel. Know that the person that you see in here is exactly who you get on those calls. And he's there because he cares and he'll teach you how to love yourself better. I love it. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> Cora, my love, thank you so much for joining me on my podcast. This has been amazing. Bye. And don't forget to book your session, girl, because I don't see you on my calendar <laughs> yet. Um, much love to you. Thank you so much for doing this. And I'll talk to you soon. Yes, for sure. So for any of the people out there that are on the fence, thinking about it, I just want to offer to you that, you know, Every one of my client sessions and is completely personalized and unique. And I work with 20 women at a time because I think it's important to make sure that I know every little thing that is happening with you, the past relationships, the names, what dad did when you were 17, what mom did last week. I need to know all of those things so that I, we can best work together and that you can effectively meet, attain, and surpass your love goals. So if that's something that sounds like you want to do, please reach out to me. I'm always here. And with that said, I want to wish you all a very, very, very beautiful um, day. Much love. Bye. All righty, girl. Does it sound bad that I said that we communicate differently? No. Does it sound bad that I'm like, I think his family might be more <laughs> yelling than I'm used to? <laughs> <laughs>